Great American rivers, like the Colorado, provide power, recreation, food and water to people and wildlife. But when demand outpaces supply and drought hits, rivers are threatened. The Colorado River Basin has suffered really badly from this drought. There's been very little snowpack this year, um, way below normal levels, and the snowpack is what drives most of the flow in the, rivers, in the Colorado River Basin. In response to the drought, the Colorado Water Trust proposed an innovative method for restoring water to the state's rivers, a drought lease program that asked water users to loan water to rivers in need. We look at the lease as an opportunity for us to find willing participants in the program and match them up with rivers. Responding to the call was the Upper Yampa Water District in Steamboat Springs, where the area's world-famous snow feeds the town's centerpiece, the Yampa River. Upstream from the city, the Stagecoach Reservoir can augment the river's flow. And during this difficult year, the owners offered to lease some water. Supported in part by funding from National Geographic and the Bonneville Environmental Foundation, the drought lease was purchased in June. The drought lease was something that everyone was happy with. Our board was happy to put the water under contract and to release the water to the river. And the river certainly benefited by the release of the water. Throughout the summer, the reservoir continually released water into the river and kept the Yampa flowing at healthier levels. So striking that deal at the appropriate time and getting that water back into the river um, was, was critical to preventing an ecological crash in the river, critical to making sure the fish populations didn't crash. Both native and introduced fish populations occupy the Yampa River system. And for aquatic biologist Bill Atkinson, drought years pose special challenges. Bill must monitor the river frequently, checking conditions. If low water levels result in conditions stressful to the fish, tubing and even fly fishing could be shut down to protect them. Of greatest concern are the native mountain whitefish. Negatively impacted by a 2002 drought, critically low flow levels could do further damage to the population. Bill also manages the introduced brown and rainbow trout populations, which support a robust sport fishing industry in Steamboat Springs. I have to look at the native fish component like the whitefish, but along with that I also have a created sport fishery that I sustain through a stocking regimen. The spectacular valley setting provides a peaceful retreat for fly fishermen. And during the quiet times on the river, you might be lucky enough to observe other native fishers. On another stretch of the river, groups of fun seekers ride the water on tubes, or the more adventurous, in kayaks. In late June, low flows forced tubing operators to close business, but the increased water from the lease helped them reopen sooner and get revenues flowing again. Traveling down through the middle of town, enjoying a day on the river, you will also pass through farm country, a mainstay of this valley's economy. A drought year brings difficult choices to farmers like Lee Kirby, who may not be able to support their cattle or crops in these tough times. I would say we're down around 30 or 40 percent of what we would normally produce. Even though Kirby's ranch is located beyond the intended reach of the lease, his farm still received enough additional water to harvest a late season hay crop. And during a hard year, this was a helpful economic boost. The scientists warn that drought years will become more common in the West. We need innovative approaches to freshwater management. This was a really important lease at the right time. And what I love about it is it's, it's really showing adaptability and that we can be resilient during these times of drought. Make sure that the river is not the last in line to get help during a time of drought. 
The lease purchase demonstrates new possibilities to balance the needs of humans and the health of our vital river systems. It's just one example of how people are working together to save the life-giving waters of America's great river systems.